And for more on the political turmoil in Brazil, Monica de Bole joins me. She's a visiting fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. So this is the third major protest this year, although initial reports are saying this one has not been as large as the other two. Is she in real trouble? Is there a real possibility she could be impeached? Well, I think impeachment is still a little bit too a little bit premature to judge. Um, certainly, there is a growing sense. I mean, even if it turns out that you know the, this this protest this time around was actually smaller than what was seen in March and April. There is a growing sense of dissatisfaction, not only with the government, but also with the massive corruption scandal um, that's come out of Petrobras, the oil company. So there's a growing sense of dissatisfaction, not only with the way that the economy is being handled, but also with the, with the aftershocks of the corruption scandal. The most obvious question to me is, why was she reelected? She's less than a year into her second term. They knew all of this. There were all of these allegations before the election. That's true. Um, but I think one thing that was not as evident was how bad the economic situation actually was. Um, when we look at October of last year, when the elections took place, unemployment at that point was still very low. Inflation was not as high. Economic, economic activity had been slowing, but it, you know, the country was not in recession. Whereas now, all of that has changed. So GDP is slumping. Inflation is at an all-time high. Unemployment has also begun to rise quite fast. So this has actually brought home to people, you know, the extent to which the economy was mismanaged over the last few years. And hence, there's a sense that, you know, people were actually not told the truth of, of what was happening in the economy. Regarding the economy, is there a certain number that the people there would feel like they would need to reach before they would push even stronger for her, for her to leave office? Let's say if the inflation creeps above 10%. Well, I think there are two key variables that people are very concerned about. One of them is obviously inflation, because that hurts people, you know, very, very strongly. Their pocketbook. Their pocketbook, exactly. Um, the other one is unemployment. I mean, there's a there's a there's a growing and an increasing sense that the labor market situation in Brazil is extremely bad. A lot of people are losing their jobs, or know of people who have lost their jobs, and. This is not going to improve anytime soon because the economy is just in the initial stages of the recession. So we can expect to see more unemployment before things get, get better. And this is where things for President Rousseff become tricky because her approval ratings are already at an all-time low. And, you know, in case unemployment continues to creep up and inflation follows suit, which is the most likely scenario at this point, things will get very dramatic for her before they get any better. It's a hypothetical question, but is there an answer to all of this? Anybody waiting in the wings that could step up and turn the economy around? Well, that's the, that's the big um, problem in Brazil at the moment. No. Um, it's a process that has to basically happen. I mean, there's a, there's a, there, there are a number of policies that are being put in place in order to get the economy going again. These policies have to take effect before people start to actually see benefits from this, and it takes time. Monica Debole with the Peterson Institute. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much.